So I've been flying FPV for a while now and I've crashed a lot. So much so, in fact, that I have a crash compilation series. Check it out in the links in the description down below. Now, if you're a beginner in FPV, chances are you have crashed a lot and chances are also that you have spent a lot of money replacing stuff at this point. We've all been there. You're not the only one struggling. You're just gonna have to take my word for that. People may tell you that they don't crash, but trust me, they do. And trust me, they're spending a lot of money on parts. Now today, I wanna to talk about some things that are really simple that all beginners can learn and just start implementing in their daily flight routine. Now, when I say simple, they truly are simple. You don't really have to change the way you fly really at all. It's just thinking a little bit ahead in terms of where your drone's gonna be, the types of things that it's going to encounter, and what might happen if you crash into those things. Now, as I mentioned, I have crashed a whole lot. I've hit concrete. I've been stuck in trees. I have gotten stuck in bushes. You name it, I've pretty much done it. But in summary, I have a lot of experience crashing and that's what I think gives me the knowledge required to really understand these tips and how they actually help. Now, if you take nothing else from this video in terms of tips, I would take this one. Learn how to crash. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's grab a quad here and let's talk this out a little bit. Say you're flying around and you see a wall coming up ahead. You're going too fast and you don't have time to, you know, brake like that or turn the other way. You don't have time to brake. You know you're gonna hit it. So what do you do to minimize the crash damage? First thing you wanna do, think about where your drone's gonna impact and what might break on it. Now, obviously you can't do this in real time because it's going very fast. You have a split second to make a decision. So you're not gonna think about every single component on the drone. But what you can do is just understand what orientation you're in and what impacts that's gonna have in a crash. For example, if you hit the front here, your motors are sticking out right in front, right? They're gonna be the first thing that's gonna get hit. That's gonna mean a broken motor bell. That's almost certainly gonna happen. The other thing that might happen was you break an arm right here, the carbon fiber. I've certainly had that happen before in this exact scenario. So the right thing to do in this scenario is actually just to orient your drone so that it's parallel with the surface. And it's for a pretty simple reason. You don't want all of the impact energy going through one or two tiny little points. You wanna spread it out as much as you possibly can. So now, in this orientation, instead of two little points, I have this whole surface to distribute the impact more effectively. So what that's gonna do for me is it's gonna prevent the super, super high energy impacts on one specific area of your quad. And instead, it's gonna spread it out over the entire frame. Trust me on this, that alone is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of frustration when you're trying to learn. So just remember, if you get nothing else from this video, when you're about to hit something and you know there's no way to avoid it, there's no way out, flip your drone parallel to the object. Trust me, it'll save you some money. So this brings me to my second point. TPU is your best friend. Up top here is for the GoPro. Those of you running an O3 as your action cam, obviously you can disregard this. This is only for people still using GoPros like myself. Now most of you know this already, but you want this mount to be TPU. You want flex. It's all about flex. The more flex you have, the more impact it can absorb and the less damage it'll do to your GoPro. This is what happens when the battery breaks the screen on a GoPro. And that is why you need to get a mount with a closed back. That's very important. It protects the screen. It provides the battery a little surface to impact instead of just the screen. You can see mine is open and that's bad. Now here's an example of a mount that is correct. It's got a backer here and it has a surface for the battery to run into that most likely would have protected my GoPro in the event of a crash, but instead I was an idiot and I used a mount that's not right. So I should be putting this on my quad. I only didn't because I didn't have another one at the time. Be smarter than me, that's why you're here to learn. A Couple other parts on the quad here that have TPU. These arm protectors. Now a lot of people don't like these because they add weight and you're always trying to eliminate weight in a quad. Now I can't speak for racing pilots because I don't do that, but at least for freestyle, there is no good reason that you should eliminate those ever. In my opinion, you should always 100% of the time use arm protectors. Don't let anyone tell you that you can save, I don't know, 20 grams here and there by cutting these things out. Trust me, it's not worth it. I've played that game and you just end up with delaminated carbon, snapped arms because of the heavier impact and just 
cut up screws on the bottom here for the motors. You don't want that, just please, trust me, use these protectors. So on to the next point here. This one has to do with how to mount electronics and how to route wires to more effectively resist crash damage. Now this one is really important, particularly in trees or like brush or any other like long scraggly type stuff that you might be flying in. You don't want any loose wires hanging outside of your quad, presenting a surface to rip off a solder pad or otherwise damage the quad. So if you can see in this quad here, I got all of my wires, and it's not pretty, I know, it doesn't have to be pretty. I got all my wires tucked in there. There's really nothing sticking out except, of course, the, the power leads here and the antennas on the back. The antennas you can't really do a whole lot about because they do have to be exposed in order to get the best performance. So just make sure when you're building your quad and you're about to fly for the first time, tuck in all those little wires, all electronics, put all of that inside of the frame the best you can. The frame's primary purpose is to protect all of the stuff. If it didn't protect and hold all that stuff, what's the purpose of a frame? Make sure your antennas are securely mounted. This may sound like a no-brainer, but I've seen many people just having an antenna loosely flopping around in the breeze, and guess what? It gets sucked up in the props, cut, and then they fail safe. You don't want that to happen to you. So instead, what you're gonna do is to make sure your antennas, both your VTX and your receiver, are both mounted securely on the frame to a point where the wires are not flopping around and they can't get sucked up into the props because they're constrained by something. So I have this mount in the back and I hold my Express LRS antenna sideways like that, and it's in such a way that these wires can't get sucked up into the props. They don't, they can't move enough, and that's because they're constrained by this piece here. And I also got my VTX antenna through this hole in here. You can't really see it, but trust me, it's in there. It's nice and away from the outside world and twigs and all that stuff. Now, could I get a little bit better video performance by sticking it through the hole and putting it outside. Yes, I could, but it's kind of a risk reward type of thing. I'm using a dipole antenna on this quad. And for those that don't know what that is, it's basically just a wire, like a little wire antenna. Now I've been chopping a bunch of those up when I used to mount them on the exterior of the drone. So that's why I moved it inside. It provides a little bit more protection. Yes, it does sacrifice some range, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. You save some money. Now for all those freestyle pilots out there, I personally would not recommend using this type of thing in anything that you're doing proximity in. So like a forest or a bando or anything like that where you're getting really close to objects and the risk of crashing is a lot higher. And the main reason I advise that is just to protect your gear. The farther out you have something sticking, you do of course get a little bit better range and video signal. But when you do that, you're sacrificing some durability because now you have this thing sticking way out here just asking to be snagged on something. What I would recommend instead is using one of these little stubby ones. It's literally just the connector and then the antenna is right on the connector. It's a much lower profile antenna. No, the range is not quite as good. No, the video signal is not quite as good as the other one, but it's so low profile that your risk of actually breaking it seriously decreases. In fact, when I was practicing Matty flips last summer, I was using this and I don't even know how many times I crashed, but if I had to guess a hundred, maybe just in that process, this is the antenna that I used throughout that whole thing. One antenna and it didn't break. That's incredible. Use these things for any sort of proximity flying, trust me. My last point here has to do with what you should do immediately after you impact something. So this will kind of depend on the situation. If you know that you can recover it, you can probably disregard this and just try to recover it. But if you know that there's no chance of you recovering, maybe there's no space or something like that, what you wanna do is disarm it immediately. And you do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, once you hit something, you don't know where the drone is going to fall or tumble. So you want to minimize the chance of it wandering off and either, you know, damaging property or hurting someone. And the other reason you want to do that is because when a drone's motors are trying to spin and they're encountering some obstacle, say it's a rock or a tree or whatever, it doesn't really matter. The more resistance they have against spinning, the more that's going to tax your ESCs. And if you do it too long, it can actually burn them out. Now the ESCs are a whole lot more expensive than the propellers, for example. So just think about what do I want to break in this scenario? Do I want to replace 
$4 props or do I want to buy a $40 ESC? I think that choice is pretty simple. All right, you guys, well, that's going to do it for this video. I really hope you learned something. These are things that I had to pay a high price to eventually learn, and I'm still learning stuff. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, drop me a like down below, leave me a comment if you want, and please subscribe if you haven't. See you in the next one.